My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is very important for us to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be fearful of the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopeful regarding the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should all be asking for. And when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, the hearts should be softened. And at the same time, we should be leaning and inclining towards the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as best as possible. My brothers and sisters, in our lives, Allah has created us in a way that we have needs and we have various items we would like to fulfill in our lives. We are always in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who will fulfill these needs and we call out to him and sometimes we call out to him for a very very long time we do not see some of the results of the dua or the supplications that we make immediately but we need to know that every time we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that supplication or dua is registered it is recorded next to our name and it is a very very great act of worship if a person does not have any of his dua answered exactly as he wanted them, but he continued to make dua to Allah in spite of that, by the will of Allah, he will be granted entry into paradise because of the sabr and the patience that he underwent or that he had to endure throughout his life. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are not impatient. Allah knows when it is best for you to get what you want. He knows if it is good at all to be given what you want. He knows if it is better for you not to have what you want. And He knows if it is good for you to get it as you wish it. Ultimately, the knowledge is His. Some of us wish for things that we think are good for us, but we don't realize that they are bad for us. Some of us wish for things that we don't realize would cause more harm or cause more havoc in our lives than had we not been given them. So it is always the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should be requesting and asking and believing in. And we should know that whatever Allah has done is always for the better. That having been said, I want to address a very, very important matter this afternoon. And that is a key to the doors that are usually closed. When we walk in the path of life, we find many doors that are sealed, many doors that are closed. The opener or the one who opens those doors is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, a person's rizq or a person's sustenance. Sometimes one is suffering in terms of wealth. They have debt. They don't have a good job. Their salary is not sufficient. Sometimes we have a health matter. Sometimes we have matters in our own homes, a social matter with our children, with our spouses, with our own parents, with our brothers and sisters, with our in-laws, uncles and aunts. We are trying to resolve the matter, but nothing is happening. So the door seems to be closed. However, there is a way of opening the door. And that way is taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a very, very simple way. But many of us take it for granted. You know, shaitan, he works on us so hard that the simplified things that Allah has kept easy, he comes to us and he tells us, meaning shaitan tells us, this is too easy. It cannot be the solution. You need to do something more than this. Yet Allah says that is the solution. The solution is very simple, but it requires continuity. You do not just read Salah because today you are sick and expect to be cured tomorrow morning. It doesn't happen. You cannot call out to Allah, make dua and supplicate to Him now that you have a financial problem and you expect someone to drop down two million ringgits tomorrow morning. It cannot be so quick. Yes, Allah can do it, but He won't because the condition that your heart is in when you are in need is far softer than when you are not in the desperate need, subhanallah. 
When a person is sick and ill or they have financial issues, don't they go to the masjid early? Don't they call out to Allah? Don't they cry tears to Allah? Don't they say, oh Allah, the adultery I committed, forgive me for it. I won't ever do it again. The alcohol I drank, forgive me for it. I won't ever do it again. The gambling I engaged in, oh Allah, I won't do it again. But oh Allah, I now have a big problem. I want you to help me, please, ya Allah. The heart is soft. We've forgiven. We have created peace between us and Allah. So Allah, through His love and His mercy, sometimes holds us in that condition for a long period of time because He knows this worshiper of mine is so close to me today because he is sick, because he has a problem. If I were to give him back what he is asking for, maybe he might forget us completely. So Allah keeps us in a certain condition. His mercy, it's His mercy. However, there is a key to these doors to open them one by one. And that key is very simple. It is called Astaghfirullah. That's all. That's a key. Astaghfirullah is a key to a lot of the closed doors that we have, if not all of them. Many doors are closed in our lives. To open the door, you need the key known as Astaghfirullah. What is the meaning of Astaghfirullah? It means, Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Forgive me. That's the meaning. With us as Muslimin, we have a misunderstanding. We think that only when I know that I've committed a sin, now I need to say Astaghfirullah and I need to repent. No, it is not only confined to when you commit a sin. Even if you have not committed any sin according to you, you need to still go through with Astaghfirullah. It is the key to the doors of the goodness of this world and the next. This is why you and I, we believe firmly that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sinless and spotless and he was perfect and he is the best creature of Allah, the most noble of all prophets. We believe that. Yet if you go into his life and his words and his statements, the hadith says he used to seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than 70 times a day. And sometimes 100 times a day, according to some of the narrations. Why? Why does someone who is spotless, sinless, perfect need to say, I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, when there is nothing to forgive? Have you ever thought of that? It is because Astaghfirullah is the key to the doors of goodness of this world and the next. Whatever you want in your life, ask Allah's forgiveness. And ask Him in a way that you mean it. Do not just sit in one sitting and say Astaghfirullah a hundred times or a thousand times without knowing what it means, without concentrating. Even if you say it once, understanding it, realizing it, it's more powerful than having sat and recited it so many times without any form of concentration. This is why we say, use your own language, whether it is English, whether it is Malay, whether it is Chinese, no matter what other language it may be. If you are finding difficulty in understanding Astaghfirullah in Arabic, say it in your language. Oh Allah, forgive me. You will feel the power of it. Oh Allah, forgive me. Repeat it when you are walking into the masjid, when you are walking out of the masjid, after your salah. Repeat it when you are in your car, when you are in the public transport, when you are at home, when you are in the kitchen, when you are about to eat, when you are dressing, when you are, you know, doing anything you are doing, when you are at work. As you walk, as you talk, Oh Allah, forgive me. Repeat this a hundred times a day. It will open the doors of all the difficulties you are facing. All the difficulties you are facing. You have a financial problem. Repeat, Oh Allah, forgive me. And ask Allah's forgiveness. If you know you have committed major sin, you need to ask Allah's individual forgiveness for every matter that you have committed a sin that you know about. And if you have committed a sin that you might not know about, you say, Oh Allah, forgive me for the sins I don't even know I've committed. Astaghfiruka limala a'lamuhu. I seek your forgiveness, Oh Allah, for that which I don't even know. So it's important to do this. My brothers and sisters, it is such a powerful statement that wallahi, it can take you straight to paradise. If you on the day of your death, one day we will all die. If we get used to saying, Oh Allah, forgive me every single day, 
It means the day I die also, I will have said it. And how many times will I have said it? And every time I say it, it is recorded. And when it is recorded and we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your records are put in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows and He will see that this person before they died on that day, they said, Oh Allah, forgive me 30 times. If that's the case, do you think that the Ra'uf, Rahim, Rahman, Rahim, Ghafoor, Rahim, most merciful, most beneficent, most forgiving is not going to forgive you? Do you think he's going to cast you into hellfire? This man said, Oh Allah, forgive me so many times, but no, no, no. I don't want to forgive him. I throw him out. No. Allah will never reject your sincere repentance. Never ever. So remember this. Now one might ask, look, you have told us something so powerful. You have told us something so good. Where did we get it from? That's a very good question. We got it from the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I've already told you the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he did. Now we take a look at the Quran in Surah Nuh. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala speaks about the Prophet Noah. May peace be upon him, Nuh. And Allah says, he told his people certain statements and he told them the benefits of certain things. Now that whole story is repeated in the Quran. When Allah repeats a story in the Quran, he does not say it for nothing. Do you think that the Quran has fairy tales that you just read a story and say, okay, I've got to the story of Noah. It was a very powerful story. The people died and then, you know, he survived. Is that the story? That is not the, that is not the moral of the story. You need to derive a lesson. That is the main thing. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَارَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ In Surah Yusuf, Allah says indeed in the stories of the previous messengers, there are lessons for those with intellect. If you have intellect, go into the story. Ask yourself, why did Allah put it here? Because He wants me to learn a lesson. What are the lessons? Go and start extracting one by one. If you don't know how to extract, go to the scholars of Islam. They will help you to extract the lessons from the stories of these messengers. So Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, he says, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ I told my people, say astaghfirullah, turn to Allah, ask Allah's forgiveness. See the same statement we are saying today. What is the moral of today's message? Astaghfirullah. Seek Allah's forgiveness. That is the moral. So he told his people the same thing. And then he explained to them why he is saying that. Why am I saying, say Astaghfirullah? Innahu kana ghaffara. Point number one, because Allah is very, very forgiving. You see, there is a difference between ghafoor and ghaffar. What is the difference? Ghafoor is one who is forgiving. And ghaffar is one who continues to forgive all the time. You know, if someone does something wrong at work and they go to the boss, say, I'm sorry. And they go back. Boss says, no problem, go back to work. They do it again. They come back, say, I'm sorry. Boss says, no problem. Go back. They do it a third time. Come back to the boss. I'm sorry. The boss says, hang on. You better sign this document to say I've given you final warning. Right or wrong? Yes. After you do it five, six times, you, you get a, a letter to say that from next month, please don't come to work. Finished. Why? Because you are making the same mistake repeatedly. I rather employ someone else. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will continue to forgive you repeatedly again and again until the day you die. No matter how many times a sin is done, your duty is to keep on asking Allah's forgiveness. When you ask Allah's forgiveness, you need to be genuine not to go back. But if shaitan has trapped you again and you went back after having planned not to go back, Still, you will find Allah most forgiving, most merciful. That is the meaning of ghaffar. Ghaffar meaning one who just keeps on forgiving. He just carries on forgiving. That's the name of Allah. And it's a quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Nuh alayhi salam says, I told my people keep on asking Allah's forgiveness, astaghfirullah, because he will keep on forgiving you. For as long as you keep on asking him, he will keep on giving you. Subhanallah. So don't lose hope. Ask Allah's forgiveness every day. And ask him forgiveness because asking forgiveness will elevate your status even after your sin is forgiven. Then what will happen? Say for example, I keep on asking Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. He says, <laughs> He will grant you beneficial rain from the skies. Through what? Through Astaghfirullah. 
Because I said, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive me, oh Allah, forgive me. Beneficial rain. What is the meaning of rain? What does rain depict? Rain depicts the flourishing of the earth and the beauty of the economy. And your entire nation begins to flourish because of the beautiful rain. The crop is produced. People are eating. People are happy. The rivers are flowing and the water is there. So everything is beautiful. That is rain. How did we get it? Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Now the young people of today, they have a problem. If you tell them, Astaghfirullah will give you rain, they will tell you, I don't want rain, I want money. I'm sure you know that. They tell you, give me, you know, fulus. I need the money, I need the cash. I need the ringgates and the dollars. What about rain? Rain comes or don't come, I'm not worried, I need the money. Now that is shallow and it is narrow mindedness because obviously you will only get money through hard work. And that will only happen if your economy is flourishing and you have a job and so on. So Allah says, we will grant you the rain. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us even more, guess what he says? Immediately after he speaks about rain, listen to what he says. And he will strengthen you with money. Which means don't worry, we know what you want. You want the cash? We will give you the cash also. Through what? Astaghfirullah. Allah says, we will give you the wealth. We will give you sustenance. We will sustain you. We will provide for you. We will make sure you are provided for. Be happy and content. No need to steal and no need to live a life higher than your means. Get down to your means. You earn a thousand ringgit, manage your month so that you will not use more than a thousand that month. You earn a million, manage your month so that you will give away a lot of that million, inshallah, to a good cause. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and open our doors. So Allah is telling us he's going to give you amwal, wealth. And then you know what he says? He will grant you strength through sustenance. He will provide for you and he will give you offspring, children. What type of children? Number one, those who don't have children will be blessed with children. You know what that means? Astaghfirullah will open the doors of marriage for those who are not married. Because to, you can't just have children. In order to have children, you need to be married. So if Allah says, we'll give you children, it means we'll get you married, someone good, and inshallah, you'll have children by the will of Allah. So number one, you want to get married? Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. A hundred times a day, a million times a day, for 10 years, five years, whenever it is, and you find the doors opening one after the other. And after that, May Allah bless those who don't have children with children, but some people don't have kids in a rush. Don't lose hope. Allah knows if it's better for you and when it's better for you. But what will open the door? It's a door that might be sealed for now. You can open it through Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Open the door. And on top of that, let's continue. If a person does have children, sometimes they are depressed because the biggest form of hurt that a person can feel is the hurt that comes from his or her own children against him or her. That's the biggest hurt. If you want to be hurt by your neighbor, it's fine because you know what? I can shift my house. If you hurt by someone else, it's one of the... But when you are hurt by your own child, it hurts you much more. How? What is the solution for that? Astaghfirullah. Turn back to Allah. You turn to Allah. See, they will turn. We disobey Allah and we want our children to obey us. Who are we? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That's why we say Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. So he will grant us children and on top of that, the children will be the coolness of our eyes. <coughs> Ultimately, we all want the gardens, the gardens of paradise. We all want rivers to flow. Allah says that same Astaghfirullah will take you there as well.